Hello and welcome to episode number five of the Tide 55 show. It's great that you're here. My name is Tommy Gentleman. I'm the CEO and founder of Tide 55 Digital Marketing. And today I'm joined by Darren and it's his birthday. Happy birthday to you, Darren. And I also would like to introduce Kendall, whose birthday was yesterday. Happy birthday for yesterday, Kendall. Oh. Yeah, did you know that? And, uh, and Matt is here as well. So you guys, we're here for this uh, episode, episode number five. And um, I'm looking forward to this. I know that it's going to be slightly different, which I'm looking forward to uh, seeing what, what comes out of Kendall's brain. So over to you, Kendall. What are we talking about? What is the stuff this week? Well, uh, this week, I'm not going to tell you. We're just going to uh, roll Ooh. with it because I didn't figure out a way to tell you without telling you because each topic, I'm going to give you some facts and then you're all going to try and guess what I'm talking about. So I can't really tell you. So it's like a game show. A little bit, yeah. All right. Are we keeping scores? Uh, yeah. All right. Let's do it. I'm just going to make the scores up as I go. <laughs> Can I have 10 to start with? Yeah. <laughs> okay, right. So the first thing we're going to talk about is a social media platform. We're going to talk about... It's not one that we've talked about so far in our four episodes. It's maybe not quite as popular or seen as much of a... Like kind of how we use social media platforms it is apparently the fifth most popular the third most popular in america and the main demographic is 18 to 24 years old what platform am i talking about matt your guess i have no idea <laughs> um all right one last clue the demographic is mainly women TikTok. wrong tommy pinterest oh matt um, oh, what's that one? It's similar to Pinterest. Um, uh, Tumblr or something like that. The answer is Pinterest. Let <laughs> uh, my dog out. He's not happy about losing that. He's no. already run away. <laughs> I think it's more seen as more like a like used for inspo. So it has where well, they are actually working on like e-commerce options and trying to make it a bit more of like making sales through it, which is obviously good for businesses. But let's talk about it because Tommy, yeah. you definitely use it for Office Inspo, right? Oh yeah, I've used it for Office Inspo and Tattoo Ideas as well. That's another board that I have. I've had, I've had it for about seven years, I think, like quite a long time. There's like tattoo inspiration on there from, from years ago. Um, I think I was only thinking this the other day that it would be amazing for some of our clients in home improvement to put their ads on there. And I know that the content, the content and um, ad content on there can last a long time. Because there's a guy I know that runs some content on Pinterest and he gets stuff from a video that he did about six years ago and it still brings attention through to him now. So there's a lot of um, potential there, I think. There's so many people that could be using Pinterest. And even though the main idea might be like just looking for inspo, you can easily just click through and you can buy it. But they're going to make it a bit easier to do it on the app, which will help, obviously. But seeing as Matt, you are in the right demographic, do you use Pinterest? And if so, what for? Don't use it. I never have done. Really? I, I don't really know anything about it, to be honest. I think I've seen a few things of it. I think I might have known someone or I, I feel like I've seen it, but I, I couldn't tell you anything about it. I don't even know what it looks like in terms of the layout. I just know the logo. I think it's a red logo with a white P inside of it, I think. Yeah. yeah. Right. I'm surprised at that demographic. Uh, what do you think Come it would on. be? Older, older for some reason. Well, the second, the right. second biggest one is thirty-five to forty-four. Okay. Do you use it, yeah. Dan? I just uh, well, it gets thrown up, so I look pretty much the same as as Tommy. Really, I'll look for things if I'm looking at uh, designing a lounge or doing some decorating or something. I might get some ideas in there. So I'm yeah, I'm, I'm quite surprised at that demographic. But then I think if I'm absolutely honest youngsters tall you guys just pick it up and run with it um a lot of older people don't i think the only one we were talking about and, and it's quite interesting actually um is 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 twitter and we're talking about how poison it was did you want to watch that caroline flack thing last night no i didn't i recorded it though i've not i've not seen it i've seen a lot of stuff on oh. twitter i've seen a lot of stuff on twitter about it which is been supportive, but I don't, I don't, I've not seen it. 
that's just quite interesting about you know how how people were being horrible to her on there and, and, the, and the media got to her and that's just quite quite sad really so it's as fantastic as it, as it is the social media side it, it, it can be potentially damaging to the people mm. i think older people seem to have got to bypass that that's that in their lives which is nice but you guys will grow up with it and um you, you've got to be quite hard hard skinned i think yeah it's to that, see some of that stuff on there yeah so like i said before it's the across twitter you know it's it's on all social media but twitter is sort of the one where you know is is the worst for it there's such a deep problem that's actually within there if that makes sense and i think you know i've said before i think there is ways that you know, where even when we spoke about that Facebook ban in Australia, I think that some form of, you know, I don't know if it's government power or whatever it may be, but some form of way to be on Twitter if there's, you know, it's only real people, not just hiding behind an account, because you can make an account mm. right now hiding behind anyone's photo, anything and everyone's photo, and you could tweet whoever, anything. And I think that's where, you know, say if there is a celebrity who's in, say, maybe the spotlight for maybe the wrong reasons, you know, and say they're not, you know, as thick skinned as maybe they need to be in that situation. And they're just all around not feeling too great. If you're receiving that level of hate, that level of toxic stuff from people you don't even know, you know, because it's not just fake accounts that do it. it is genuine, real accounts with real people behind it. You know, going in at someone like that is that's why you hear that's why you hear these really bad stories sometimes. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, I actually think now we're talking about it. Well, last week when we talked about it, we said that, or I even said probably, that I think all of them have the toxic side. But I don't think Pinterest does. Well, I would have thought so. Pinterest is a little bit of like the fairy land of social media. Like, it's, But then maybe that's because it's not really opinionated. It's visual. People yeah, don't but... post a picture and write their opinion. It's just like, well, you it's... just look at stuff. Next topic, which again, is this one might even be harder for you to work out. But... This is something that is quite big in the news. It has been for a little while, obviously marketing related. But although it seems, for me, it seems like everyone's talking about it, it doesn't seem like anybody knows about it. That's all I'm giving you. Now you have to see if you can work out what I'm talking about. Tommy, you can go first. <laughs> what? <laughs> something... There's a change. There's a change that's happening or happened. Okay. It's big. Yeah. But no, they're saying it's going to affect digital marketing, but no one okay. really knows how. Are you talking about the iOS update? Oh, you can't get it right. That's not fair. You haven't let everyone else decide. Oh, oh shit. I, should, okay. I shouldn't have talked. <laughs> but yes, I am talking about the iOS update. <laughs> Matt, Darren, have you heard much about this? Nothing. I, I woke up the other day and my phone updated to like iOS. I don't know what it was, 14. like, like 14.0.02 yeah, yeah, or something like that. I, what's happening? Tommy, have you updated yours? No, I, I don't update to all No, so I always leave it as long <laughs> I'm not a guinea pig. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so basically they're, they're changing, um, and I, when I say that no one really knows, I mean that. So what I'm going to say here, I'm not even sure if I know what I'm talking about, <laughs> but they're changing <laughs> a lot to do with the way you like can track so obviously using facebook ads and stuff you can track what people are doing and where they're going and sites they're using but they're kind of kind of stopping that or at least giving you the option to opt out of that which they're saying is going to really affect facebook advertising yeah but no one really knows how why if or what but you know like gdpr they're kind of putting it on the same level as that Obviously, that was quite a massive thing, and it was all crazy, crazy, crazy. And now it's just like, it doesn't. It's just normal. So it's kind of weird. Do well, you? It'd be difficult to opt out, though, wouldn't it? Pardon? It'd be difficult to opt out. That's the problem. A lot of these things they say you've got to opt out. It's even difficult to find the way to opt out. Well, I think it's literally just going to be as simple as just ticking a setting. We can just when I think I think yeah, when you update, you just. It's it's basically, mate, that what they're doing is saying they Apple want this. You can tell it's a big motivation for them. They they want to take back the control so that Facebook don't have this power to be able to track and follow people uh, with their ads. So I've seen it. I've seen the message that comes up. It's basically, are you? It's something like, 
are you comfortable being tracked <laughs> by this company? I mean, no one in their right mind is going to say yes when it's framed like that. So they're, they're framing the question like that so that when you go and you see some content, I think it's possibly when you visit websites as well, it will say, do you want this company tracking you everywhere? You know, essentially, do you want to be followed by this company everywhere secretly? No one's going to say yes to that. You know, unless they absolutely love that brand, mm. unless they absolutely is a favorite brand and they're like, no, I don't want to miss out. So I'm going to say yes. You know, think about like us, for example, if, if we showed up on someone's phone, Tide 55, this marketing agency want to follow you around on your phone. Is that okay? They're going to say no. They're going to say no. Whereas before you could just do it. How, how do you, how do you think that's going to affect like Facebook advertising? Like what we do with our clients? Yeah, personally, I, I said this to you in private. It's good for us. It's good for us. It's good for any, any um, agency or marketer that isn't afraid to get their hands dirty, isn't afraid to be a bit of a bookworm and learn, learn about the changes, will be all right because they will be the ones that know what to do. It's just a change of the rules. It's not eliminating the actual gain of, of being an advertiser on Facebook or Instagram. There will be a benefit to this but it's just that everybody knows about the pixel. It's been around for about five years. Everyone's got a bit complacent with it and everyone sort of from their, from their uncle to their auntie can do it themselves. This is great for us because it means that what we're going to be able to do is so specialist that we're going to become more valuable. If you, you're saying there's a way around it and you've got to learn how to do it and, and, that's, and that's great, but realistically, you've got to be able to you'll tell that individual that you're doing that tracking though, surely, because otherwise you're in the same position as the GDPR. It doesn't need to even There's be ways about it. it. Whereas before... It doesn't even need to be about before. tracking. It doesn't even need to... That's the thing. Like, as, as a Facebook marketing uh, strategy, there will be other ways to achieve the result, which is, of course, to attain the sale than tracking someone. That's what I'm saying. Like, there's... You, right. don't, okay. you don't even need... What, yeah, just to be clear, what I'm saying is I'm not going to find some other shithouse way of getting around it. What I'm saying is there will be other ways that you can achieve the result that are far greater in quality um, by understanding the new rules, by understanding what's possible, what's not, and then adapting the content to be able to suit the end result. Um, right. I think people have just got, had it too easy. People have had to, it's been too, too easy to do it. And that's another thing, like a lot of um, businesses will sort of try and do it themselves. They're not gonna be able to do that anymore. Have we all got Apple phones now? Who's, all got, who's got Apple? Apple. Yeah. I even fell into the trap of spending over sixty quid on one of their cases as well, and it doesn't even and it doesn't it don't even cover your screen. <laughs> Are you Apple, yeah. Darren? Sorry. Are you Apple? BlackBerry. Oh. Have you actually got a BlackBerry? <laughs> I don't think I know anyone that's got a BlackBerry. No, I haven't. I haven't had it. Oh God! What, are you serious? Then? <laughs> I did do. Uh, loops us nicely into topic three. Um which again is probably going to be really hard for you to figure out, but whatever, let's see what you come up with. Um, so a food brand launched a, and they called it news nostalgia, um, where the product comes with a QR code on the box and that when you scan it, allows customers to play an augmented reality version of the classic Pac-Man game. Well, Who? Darren, you can go first. Oh, there you go. I'm, I'm, I'm only thinking, and I'm probably well off the, the mark here. Pac Man. Yeah. For some reason, I'm thinking of a sweet, but I'm probably well, well off the mark. And I'm just thinking of Tic Tacs because of the, <laughs> the colours of them and the little shape of them, but it's, I'm probably nowhere near. That's a good one. Yeah. No. Okay. Matt? So that, that's my stab. Gut feeling where you say it comes in a box. And if you're playing a game, it means your product is going to come in a box and you've got to kill about 15 or 20 minutes and say, a, you know, a VR version of Pac-Man might do that. Gut feeling says it's going to be along the lines of pizza. It could be a cereal now. But it could be a cereal. Oh, but I, mm. I don't know if it's going to be... I don't, I don't know. Place your guess, Matt. You've only got one. Um... It's definitely not Domino's. I'm gonna go. I'm just gonna go for someone like Pizza Hut, but Very that's funny. wrong. I mean, they've got to be a big company to be able to put that sort of resource in. They've got to be. They've got to be probably American. 
Um, it's very, yeah. Uh, and, it, um, and to be fair, they probably would have had to have been around back then as well for it to be something that they would be motivated to do and would make sense for their company culture. Um, all right, I'm, I'm torn between two, but I'm gonna, oh fuck, I'm gonna go Doritos. <laughs> okay, what yeah? was your second one? Who was your first one? Doritos was the first one. The sec uh, second one, a bit, bit different, Jelly Bean. Okay, fine. Okay, so I'm actually really proud because one of you got it right. Whoa. It was Pizza Hut. Oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> go, Matt. So basically, that is gonna, this is gonna have like, a picture of the game on the box and then you scan the, co the code and they're doing it so that they're trying to get you I think it's more in America but they're doing it so that they try and get you to tweet your scores and some some kind of something will win like a custom something it's brilliant you, yeah, yeah, you win a custom pac-man game cabinet yeah that's cool that's just gonna go viral that's just gonna go viral yeah, well, this is it. We're we, we're going to have to drive this forward and see how we can help our help our clients and other businesses with what we know about that, with your experience. That's one of them now. Call him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I just, it just amazes me how it, how it's not brought stuff to life because you know, you, although you know, you don't have the billboards and that around that you used to, and everything is just on your phone so much. So. It's got to be something that's close to you. It can't be out in the streets promotion, really. You do get the other thing at bus shelters and that. But it, if you're, you've got a pizza box on your, on your table and it's there and you could be playing it, having pizza, with, sharing pizza with friends and that, that's all very social, isn't it? And everyone's going to sit around with their phones and, and do it. It's, it's a great concept. I told you, uh, I want to say in episode two of this about yeah. imagine if it was a bit like Pokemon Go and that's how e-commerce went. I think you might see little things like this, whether it be games or, you know, something that keeps you interested in that brand. Because would I be right in saying, even if there is, say, a Pac-Man game that you can play through their box, is there some form of, like, Pizza Hut thing to it at all? Or is it just pure, solely Pac-Man? Or is it going to be plastered in Pizza Hut branding? So if you take a screenshot of, oh, look, I got a pizza the other day, and then I played this game, that if you then, say, shared a screenshot on social media or, say, sent it to someone, they're going to know from seeing that that it's by Pizza Hut. So the, the, the way it works, I just saw, like, a picture of it, and your, so the box, the, the, the box, right, say this is the box, it's got the, the map of Pac-Man on it, right? So you're laying it down like that. So when you're playing it, they are running on your Pizza Hut box. Oh, man. <laughs> it's cool, right? Which is cool because... It basically says that they've combined like two of the things that have gone crazy from the pandemic, which is oh, like at home brain. dining and nostalgia. Yeah, I just sort of wish I was in on that. I, I wish I had a slice of that. <laughs> oh, nice. Okay, fine. Uh, well, <laughs> great. We're done. Just going, back, sorry, just going back to the QR code. Yeah. Okay, I've got a, a question here, and, and you might know this, but it's, what was the first product have a barcode you probably you probably use it every day a lot of probably you probably use it every day is it bread. fairy liquid no is it bread bread yeah no no milk no i'm pretty sure i better google it now though so i know i think it's i think it's chewing gum oh wow chewing gum i think go on have a, have a quick look i'm pretty sure the first product to have a barcode was chewing gum i've got all these uh possible options just orbiting around me that was a pun <laughs> uh it was actually I'm wrigley's go, <laughs> 70 yeah, it was wrigley's i think sorry seven, 79 just to play the, the 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 odds game matt give us a year 1972 oh 74 oh that's odd long way off Bloody hell. crazy eh why why though like I can understand like if it was bread or milk because you'd have an expiration element to it and you maybe want to track that. But was chewing gum like massively controversial when it came out or something? What is this food you eat that you don't digest? Anyway, we're done if, if everyone's... Pl plenty to chew on there though, so. Oh, <laughs> oh mate. <laughs> oh, okay. So to end us off today, I'll go Kendall, on. thanks yep. Kendall for, for hosting. You've been a breath of fresh air today. <laughs> <laughs> Any more? <laughs> no? I, I'm I just... I can't think of any.
just worried for the very cringy mini clip that's going to come from this. The, cr <laughs> the cringe levels are going to be through the roof. Trying to work out if that's a pun or not. No. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Fine. Sticky stuff. So, to end on Darren it's today, it's where is, where is um, chewing gum banned in the world? What city? What is it banned? Be somewhere like Tokyo. Over that way. Shanghai. Singapore. Singapore. Mm. I think it's, you can't have it. I'm not going to lie, I'm surprised they didn't ban chewing gum when Corona became a thing. Because think, think how many people when they're out there, because I remember when it was like during the pandemic and I had chewing gum in. And I was like, mate, I feel like a criminal right now, even if I put that in a bin and someone sees it. Mm. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm surprised there wasn't something about that. That's a good point, yeah. Who knew we could talk so much about chewing gum? <laughs> Interesting. It's plenty to get your teeth into around. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. Anyway, Davin, to end us off today, seeing as it's your birthday, I'm going to ask you a load of questions that can help us get to know you a bit better, okay? Okay. Again, we're going to go quick, okay? So, the first thing that comes to your head. Don't think about it too much, okay? Are you ready? Yeah. If you had a time machine, would you go back in time or visit the future? Back. Okay. You can only eat one meal for the rest of your life. What do you eat? Something with fish. <laughs> you can visit one place on Earth. Where do you go? Barbados. What makes you angry? My children. <laughs> <laughs> if you can be a celebrity, any celebrity for one day, who would you want to be? Is this dead or alive? Any. Oh, Elvis Presley. Okay. What's the best book you've ever read? Oh, blimey. Quicker. What comes to your head? Oh, sorry, I can't think of one, really. I kind of like... Um... Oh God! I like Michael Caine. Blow you, blow the bloody doors off. If you were an animal, what would you be and why? Dolphin. Sleek. <laughs> what is your biggest fear? Um, heights. What was the last film you watched? Oh, finally. I don't know. I don't really watch films. Really. Oh, the best say. film you've ever watched. I uh, thought it'd be Back to the Future or Great Escape or something like that. Okay. Okay. Last one. No, actually, I've got two more. If we're all at a karaoke night and it's your turn to sing, what are you going to sing? Sweet Caroline. <laughs> okay, last one. This really is the last one. If everybody came with a warning label, what would yours say? My name. Oh. I can't really think. Sorry, that's a bad one, isn't it? <laughs> warning label. You got it. That's the last question. Blind me. <laughs> I can't think. Apologies, I can't. That's fine. Well, Do happy birthday anyway. What's yours be on that? Mine would probably be gets too excitable. Don't give caffeine to. Yes, well done. It's been a, a great catch up and I really enjoyed that answering the questions well done Kendall for bringing those to us today so happy birthday again to Darren and to Kendall yesterday uh, and thank you Matt for your time being here on the call guys if you've liked what you've seen and you want to uh, ask us any questions for us to answer in future episodes then please do suggest them in the comments otherwise we'll see you again in episode six see ya